Hello and welcome to the video. In this session we're going to create an assignment but this time we're going to attach some teaching and learning resource to it and to start off with we need to be over in SharePoint. So here I am in SharePoint and we're going to be working in the history site today and we're going to be using uh, a year 11 class. I'm going to drop into this year 11 library so this is my year 11 library and these are the resources that are available to me and for today's assignment I will be attaching a worksheet and also some reading material. However, I do need to go over into Teams. That's where I'm going to be actually creating my assignment. So let's just go into there now. And here I am in my History Year 11 class. As always, I need to be in Assignments and I can come to the bottom of the page and select Create. And from Create, I've got a couple of options available to me. I can recycle existing assignments that do have resources attached to them. But in this case, I'm just going to go straight into New. This then opens up my assignments creation page. And first of all, I need to give my assignment a title. And now I need to put some instructions in. I have loads and loads of space for that. And also, with the instructions area, I get some basic word tools, so I can put in bold text, italics, and underline. I also can change the font color and size, and also I can put in things like bullet points and uh, numbered points. I also have the option of being able to bring in links, and also I can upload photographs as well. However, for today's session, we're just going to put some written instructions in. So now that I've entered in my instructions, I can come down the page and I can now think about adding my attachments. I have several options available to me so I can place in my learning accelerators. I also have the opportunity of being able to bring in various apps. For example, I can bring in YouTube links or book widgets if they use them within your school. I also do have the option of being able to create some fresh content. I can create a new Word document, Excel spreadsheet, PowerPoint. I can even create a fresh class notebook page in here. I can put in a video recording or I can attach uh, an item off my whiteboard. However, for today, I'm just going to go over to this attached area here. And from here, I can bring an attachment from my OneDrive. I can align this assignment to my class notebook. I can add a link. I can create a reading progress item or search progress, but because I'm going to bring in some content that we looked at earlier on from SharePoint, I need to select Teams. This will bring up a list of available Teams where I have resources available to me. I'm just going to scroll down to the history area. This is where my history libraries are. As you can see, I've got my year group libraries, so I'm going to choose year 11 because that's where I'm working today. and. Elizabeth in England. And if I scroll down the list, I've got my Spanish Armada worksheet that we looked at here in SharePoint. So there's my Spanish Armada worksheet there. And also a PowerPoint presentation, which is going to be my reading material. Let's go back into Teams. There's a Spanish Armada worksheet. And there's the reading material there. Now that these have been selected, I can then click attach. That will then upload a copy from SharePoint and attach it to my assignment. However, because the attachments are coming from SharePoint, the default settings in SharePoint are that students only have read-only access to documentation in there. So in the case of this worksheet, where I actually want my students to write on the page, I do need to change this to students can edit. If I come over to the right hand side here, three dots, open it up and set this now so that students can edit their own copy. The PowerPoint presentation I can leave because that's just reading material. I can then also go back in and add additional content if required. However, I'm now going to come over to the right hand side of the page and start to fill out the hand in details and the points, etc. I want to give my students one week to do the work. So I'm just going to push that out a little bit. And 2100 hours is a little late for my students for the hand-in time, so I want it to be handed in by 1700 hours. 
I do have the option underneath to edit the assignment timeline. So again, from this area here, I can schedule the assignment so I can set a date sometime in the future for the assignment to be released. So as I'm teaching the lesson in the background, that assignment is then being released to my students. I can alter the due date and time from here. And I can also set a hard close date as well. So if I'm getting my students to work to a deadline, by default, the hard close date is the hand in date. So once this date and time is achieved, my students cannot hand in that homework. You do get the option of being able to change the date. So if you wish to give your students a, a grace period, so to speak, you can do that. However, for today's session, I'm just going to leave this switched off. If you've made any changes in this area, don't forget to hit done. Beneath the date and time, it tells me which class is going to get this work. In this case, it's my year 11 history class. I get the drop down so I can push it out potentially to my year 10 class as well. However, for this session, I'm going to keep it in my year 11 class. Beneath that, by default, it's going to all of my students. By selecting the drop down, I can change that to all current and future students. So any student that joins the class after this assignment has been set will then receive the assignment to do. I can push it out to individual students and just click off the list here. And also from here, I get the option of being able to set up group work. So I can either manually group my students or I can get Microsoft Teams to group students on my behalf. However, for today, I'm just going to set this so that all of my students within the class are going to receive this assignment. I need to allocate some points. There's three questions, 10 points per question. So, so I'm going to set it to 30 points for the overall marks that can be achieved. I can add a rubric if I wish. However, I'm not going to do that in this session. Beneath that, I can add a tag. We've already got some pre-made tags here. So we've got Elizabeth I, Knowledge Check Reading Research Skills. If I wanted to add a new tag, which could be associated to a topic that we're studying or even give it a teacher's name, if I'm job sharing, I can just select new tag. And in there, I can type in the new tag title and I must remember to hit enter once I've done that, that will make the, the tag stick. This is associated to Elizabeth I, so I'm just going to select one of my pre-made tags. Now that I've added a tag, I can then come to the top of the page. And I've got several options available to me up here. So I can add it to my calendars. By default, this is set to none for my class. However, I can push this out into my students' calendar, students in my calendar, and also students and the team owner's calendars. If I was to select student only, this will place a reminder into their Outlook calendar, which will then trigger a few hours prior to the assignment needing to be handed in. Also, the notification in this case is set to general. So once this assignment goes live, the notification for that will go through into the general channel in Teams. However, as this is part of the Elizabethan England topic, I want the notification to go into my Elizabethan England channel. So just come to the top here, select the drop down, and it's going to go into Elizabethan England there. The late notifications is switched to off. If I was to turn that on, Every time a student hands in this uh, assignment late, I'll be notified in Teams. It will flag up a small banner in the bottom right hand side of my screen. However, I'm going to keep this off for the time being. I can then come to the bottom of the screen and I've now four options available to me. I can either discard the assignment, scrap it and start again. I can save it as a draft, which means the assignment gets packed up. It's not live. However, I can come back to it and add further instructions, indeed attach more uh, attachments if I wish, reset the dates or do anything that I need to do on the right hand side here prior to it going live. Where it says assign, I can hit the drop down arrow and I get the option to be able to schedule the assignment or I can just assign it now. So in this case, I'm just, it's ready to go. So I'm just going to hit assign and that will then push that straight out to my student. The notification for it, will now appear in my uh, channel at the bottom here. And as we can see at the top of the page, here's the forthcoming area here. And that's my uh, assignment there, wait, ready to go. The tag is set to Elizabeth the first, 
We've got our notifications now appeared on the bottom right hand side of the screen. The channel is now lit up. If I very quickly click on the assignment, as we can see, there's still 27 to return. So my students haven't read it or even completed the work yet as it's fresh. And as we can see, the status is set uh, to not hand it in. If I come over to the far right hand side of the screen, three dots, I can go back in and edit the assignment if required from here. So if I wish to add further instructions, another attachment I can do by selecting edit. I'm just going to select back and take me back to the beginning again. And I'm just going to quickly drop into the channel and here we have the notification. So let's go over to the student view. Here I am in the student view. And as we can see, the Elizabethan England channel is lit up. Here's the announcement for the assignment here. Also, the student gets notification in the activity bell as well. So just by clicking on it, that now opens up the assignment. So the student can start to do the work uh, from here. The assignments backpack on the left hand rail here also will display the assignment as well as going into Teams and then clicking on the assignments button. And as we can see, there's the Spanish Armada worksheet assignment waiting to be completed. I'm just going to click on it. That'll take us in. And as we can see, we've got the uh, title of the assignment, the due date. There's a tag that's associated to it. There's our two lines of instructions. So as Susan can see the points value is set to 30. So she knows there's maybe a fair bit of work to do to achieve that for this assignment. Beneath that, we've got our attachment. The Spanish Armada PowerPoint here was reading material and that's now stored under reference materials. And beneath that, the worksheet, which we made editable, is now stored under uh, my work. Susan still gets the option of being able to attach additional content so she can create some new documentation or indeed she can attach further documentation potentially from a OneDrive or add a link or bring something in from her device as well. So to open the worksheet, she can either double click on it or go three dots and she can open it up in Word, Word Online. She could even download it to do the work or simply she can just double click on the bar that will then open up Word in the browser. So as you can see, it's Word on the web. There is uh, no save button. So as Susan completes the work onto the worksheet, it will automatically save for her. So we'll leave Susan to get on with the work. Susan has now completed the work. She can click the three dots and just go back into it. So Word online, so back in the browser. Susan so keep coming backs and forwards and adding more content to suit right up to the point of when she wants to hand in the work. So she's done quite a bit of work here. So she's going to just close the tab at the top here. And Susan can now hand the work in. However, despite the fact the work has been handed in, she can recall that work back. So she can undo the hand in so long as the teacher isn't marking it. Susan can then reopen this and add additional content. She can still attach and to do all the things that she needs to do to be able to complete the assignment. So when she's ready, all she needs to do is click on hand in again. Let's go back into the teacher view. So now we're back in the teacher view and I'm going to go into assignments. And as we can see at the top of the page, there's our worksheet assignment. And if I just hover just underneath the line here, as we can see on the far right hand side, we've got one out of 27 has now turned the work in. So I can just click anywhere on the bar. That will take me in. And as we can see, Susan here has now uh, handed that work in. So I can click anywhere on the line. That has now opened up the speed grading area. And because we clicked on Susan, this is now automatically opened up here homework submission and again as it's a word document it's opened up uh, in the browser so I don't need to click save or anything and I can just go straight into review and if I just select editing at the top of the page here I can go from editing into reviewing and this now means that if I then put a text on the page it's then highlighted in red so that when the student comes to review the work they'll be able to see any comments that I've added. So 
So I can then continue to work down the sheet, adding any further comments. I do also get the option of being able to add comment boxes as well. Once I've finished putting any notes on the work, I can then go over to the speed grader on the right hand side here and I can then put in my formal feedback and I can come down the page and I can also either add a short video so I can make a quick stream video also have the option of being able to attach any further documentation or indeed I can actually create some additional documentation for additional research potentially for Susan to do all I need to do now is give it the points allocation so I'm going to give a 25 out of 30 now that I've put my feedback in and graded the work I've got two options available to me I can either return the work as complete if Susan hasn't done quite enough work to satisfy the instructions I can return the work back to her so she can do a little bit of additional remedial work and then resubmit it for grading however I'm happy with everything that she's done so I'm just going to select return here that will then post that back to Susan and I can then move on to my next student so at the top here I can either select the drop down list and choose my next student to mark their work or within the speed grader I can use these next student toggle arrows I can then just toggle through the class there and grade the work as it appears as there's nothing additional to do here I'm just going to click close that takes me back to the beginning as you notice Susan has now dropped off the to return list and it's now been pushed over into the returned area if I quickly just drop back into the student view now that we're back in the student view I can go into completed here's the work here so Susan can reopen it and she can then see the feedback and also the points this again is reflected in her grades area but also Susan does get the opportunity of being able to go back revisit the work and she can hand it in again for regrading if if she wishes I'm just going to select back and I'm going to drop back into the teacher view so now they're back in the teacher view I'm just going to come out of the assignments area and I'm going to drop into the grades tab so all all homework once it's been marked and graded this will then come through into the grades tab area here and as you can see I've got my students within my class and these are the homework that's been set for this class and if we come down the line here as we can see we've got the grades here and here's our Spanish Armada worksheet that we've just done and there's the scoring for Susan I can click on a student and that will then take me into their own grading area here and then I can see just exactly how Susan's been doing over the course of this academic year so far to get back out I can just click anywhere on the side here I'm just going to go into general and that one takes me back into my uh, conversation area if you found this video useful please click the like button please don't forget to subscribe and if you hit the activity bell you'll be notified every time Cloud Design Box uploads a new video thanks for watching